Today, I'm going to talk about how to build a network, and specifically for members of the military. How many of you have moved within the last year or plan on moving within the next year? Yeah, it's mostly military, military families. For the rest of you, I want to give you a little insight into what that's like and how I personally have tried to accomplish that. I'm going to look at three questions. They are, why do we as people have networks in the first place? What type of networks meet the needs that we have as people? And then how do we use technology and how has technology affected the building of those networks? So starting off with, why do, pe why do we as people have networks? I'll give you kind of a, a sappy answer to it. I think, in one word, relationships. And I know it's kind of a buzzword, but I do think it's super important for us as humans to have relationships. And there are studies out there that link suicide and depression and drug use to, to not having those relationships, to feeling alone and being a burden to society. So I'm trying to look at the purpose of networks and the, the things that I came up with for why we have these networks <clears throat> are kind of tied into why we're here as a group in Toastmasters. For friendship, for fun, for learning, and also for practical reasons like earning a paycheck. <clears throat> Uh, for the division of labor, labor that we have in our society, I don't necessarily always want to mow my lawn or conduct surgery, but we have people like Fred to do those things for us. <laughs> <laughs> so what type of networks meet these various needs that we have? I kind of looked at the hierarchy of needs and how initially we're born into a family and the family meets those needs. And then as we grow up, organizations start to meet those needs, school, clubs, religion, and then once we usually leave our home, work starts to meet some of those needs. From a military perspective, in building the networks that we have, I guess for civ civilians too, you have to look at both friendly networks and enemy networks. Within the military, enemy networks can be pretty clear. The Nazis during, uh, during World War II, like Warren talked about. And then for civilians within a company, it might be a, a fellow competitor within a sub-network. But by looking at these networks and how they meet our needs, it, it reminded me of how important the quality of our networks are. And I think back to my time here at NPS, and one of the the, the highest quality, I guess, networks that I think that I've had in my life has been within my church. And they've really done a great job of helping me out and raising my daughter. As I have had her here in Monterey every month, there are five or six families that have taken her in while I've had class and done a great job of integrating her in with their kids and kind of building a family overall. So the third question I have is, how has technology affected these networks? And specifically, I'm looking at moving in the next six months, and I'm more than likely going to Colorado Springs, and so I'm looking at how I can start to build my network there as a military family. So I thought back to about almost 20 years ago. In 1995, I think I was 10 years old, and I could, I could probably count the number of phone numbers that I knew by memory on my hands. I knew my grandma, my parents obviously, a couple of good friends, and then my dad had a list of about a 50 to 100 phone numbers that we used as a family that I would, I would usually go to the kitchen, open the pantry door, and look through the list, and then go to the phone and make phone calls that way. And... And then we, I also had a school directory, which I would <clears throat> thumb through and look for the numbers of the parents, my friends, if I wanted to go over to their houses. So I was kind of restricted to those forms of technology to build my network as a kid. But today we have text messages where you can reach out to say 10 people at a time. We have emails <coughs> where you can send an email to hundreds if not thousands of people. 
We have Twitter, where you can reach out to a million people at a time, <laughs> sometimes saying not so intelligent things. <laughs> and I think the quality of our networks really depends on how much communication and the quality of communication that we have with people. So I like what Mon Monique said about working smarter and not harder. And as far as the communication goes and building our networks, I think it's important to reach out to key groups and communities, especially as military members, in the next place that we're going in order to establish those communities really early on so that we can jump into the community and receive the help that we need. And I think of my own daughter. So as far as reach, researching my network that I plan on building in Colorado Springs, I've already reached out to church organizations. Uh, I've looked at some schools where my daughter might start school. And then my, my daughter is also interested in starting ballet. So I've started to do some research and make some phone calls about that. But overall, I would like to leave you with this. And hopefully this will help you become a load star in terms of building your own networks. From the military's perspective, it's great to go into a community and get plugged in with both military and civilians within that community. And I would encourage you who are not in the military to really welcome and embrace the military members as they come in and make them a part of your own network. And I think both parties will really benefit from that. So, thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. The two previous evaluators are my love stars for oh. evaluating speeches. <laughs> so, Gordon, great speech today. He's doing the innovative planning number six. He's connecting with the audience, five to seven minutes. The purpose, he chose a topic that is unfamiliar to the majority of the crowd here. Practice adapting during the presentation. Monitor the audience reactions to the topic and adapt as necessary to maintain engagement with the audience. So I couldn't agree with you more on the topic. Uh, a lot of the classes that I'm taking, we're talking about networks, how networks you know, exist in the commercial sector, in the military, and it's kind of one of the subjects I like to read outside of school as well. So very intriguing to me. Gordon wanted me to look at saying so and the use of or putting his hands in the pockets. Hands in pockets, zero, so, <laughs> three. Yeah, three. Thank you. So I have four sustains. Things are doing great. And I have two improves. So the first sustain, well-structured intro, great engagement, uh, the question in the, in the beginning really engaged the audience. You, you ask that question, people raise their hand. That's, that's perfect for a speech like this. Uh, second sustain is organization. So you had those three questions. Why do we have networks? Um, because of relationships, you develop friendships. It's fun to have a network and have relationships. And they help you learn and kind of get that mental mindset to be uh, a lifelong learner. Second question was building networks and how important networks are. That was a, gr a great time with your daughter and your church, and also a great time with the phone numbers you knew as uh, in the 90s. And then great examples of each technology that you use to develop your network and ensure that your network kind of maintains in your life. The third imp or sustain was the technology effect on the network. So great use of humor to break the tension. I think you did it sometime there during the, I think you're really good at it. And it's funny that, that Fred said you're an uh, extrovert because obviously you're an introvert, but you're very skilled at using humor in ways that I, I actually look up to you. In that way. So great on that. And your last sustain was great challenge to the audience at the end. I have two things you could probably improve on. The use of the stage, you stood here, you. In your last speech, you used, I think you used a chair, you used like the, your entire area up here. I think you can do a little better job with that. You obviously show that you can in your last speech. And the second improve is you actually ended your last sentence with the, the infamous Gordon, so. 
<laughs> so my challenge to you going out from here is track how much you use the word so on a daily basis and try not to use it inappropriately at all in your next speech. But thank you, Gordon.